Welcome back to Ted's Fish Room. Let's take a look at what's happening in the breeding projects and introduce a new species to the program, the small loricarid catfish and Cistrus claro. The Panaculus albivermis are growing they have become much more active, less shy, and come out readily for food. Occasionally I will see one of them exploring a spawning cave, but so far none of the males have taken up more permanent residence. The only change that I am contemplating is to change the type and size of spawning caves. The Benitochromus nigrodorsalis have settled in and a weak pair bond is formed. The largest male has started to exert his dominance over the other fish in the tank, and has even killed a few tetras. He tolerates one female in his space, but the other two fish are constantly avoiding him. I removed the female as she was very stressed by the negative attention. The extra male is holding his own, but I will remove him soon. I want to give the new pair more time to cement their bond. I am concerned that removing the extra male too early may result in the dominant male turning on the female he seems to tolerate. The only changes to the tank have been the addition of some pebbles for more structure and spawning sites and a power head to provide more current and aeration in the tank. I added the pump because the cichlids are not being very active, but now with the water really flowing they are coming out into the open much more frequently. The epistogramma pairs stalled a bit when my reverse osmosis machine started to have some problems. You can watch the video on the overhaul of the unit, resulting in water that is much softer and lower in pH. Since fixing that problem, the dwarf cichlids are faring much better and showing more signs of spawning, especially the Epistogramma benchy pairs. This female appears to be guarding a clutch of eggs. The Epistogramma species Kellery have also responded well to the softer water. They spawn regularly, but I did see the female holding larvae in her mouth for the first time, but I missed getting some video. A new species to the program are two pairs of wild Epistogramma species Abacashi. This species needs very low pH and I am currently working at getting the acidity down under 5.0. These are young fish and are just now reaching maturity. And Cistrus claro is one of the nicest small loricarids to come into the hobby in the past 20 years. The common name is the Gold Marble Pleco and it earns that name by having an olive green body and lighter yellow squiggle patterns all over. And Cistrus claro comes from the Rio Claro in the state of Mato Grosso in far southwest Brazil and is part of the Rio Paraguay system. This distant location from major fish export cities makes the gold marble pleco an uncommon export, but this year several shipments made it out. As an aquarium fish, and Cistrus claro has a lot going for it. It is a small species, topping out under 3 inches, and they are not particularly nasty to each other. Colonies of many fish are possible. The water they come from is moderately soft and successful spawning has been reported in a wide range of pH levels. They are omnivorous, leaning towards vegetarian, so are not hard to feed. They spawn in caves in typical ancestral style. If there is one knock against Claro, it is that the spawns are relatively small and infrequent compared to other types of bristlenose plecos. My colony is going to be set up in a 30 breeder on the upper rack in my fish room where the temperature is going to stay in the mid 70s. I will want it a little warmer than that so I'm going to use a heater to take it up to about 78 or 79. The tank will be filtered with a Paray cube filter and current is being provided by a small internal power filter. The natural habitat of this species is described as fast flowing with rocks, pebbles and sand. I am including some wood in the tank for the plecos to chew on but the primary structure will be rocks and spawning caves. My tap water is too hard for this species, especially the carbonate hardness, so I'll be using reverse osmosis water and reconstituting it with some general hardness and a little carbonate to buffer the pH. My target is GH4 and KH2. I will let the pH be where it will be, but with the hardnesses as low as I'm going to keep them, the pH will be close to neutral. I have 14 and Sisters Claro that are going to go into this colony. They are young and not so easy to sex. Males will have the telltale tentacles on their face, but females can have a few bristles as well, though most females do not. I think that this group is about 50-50 males and females. 
I've had these fish in quarantine for three months with no issues or losses. The tank is ready for the fish, so in they go, and this breeding project is officially started. The available literature describes Claro as slow to grow and mature, so I'm not expecting much from this group for several months. But you never know, fish cannot read. So that's it for setting up species Claro. You can read about this breeding project and all of my aquarium adventures on my video blog at www.tedsfishroom.com. If you have some experience with species Claro that you would like to share with us, please feel free to make a comment in the comments section of this YouTube channel or in the comments section of my video blog. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room.